In our last episode, we explored the top of the Rockies before leaving Colorado westbound with no specific destination in mind. In this episode, we encounter a few familiar places, but find ourselves on a whole new adventure. Pack our bags and get in that car. Leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the country sound is so pretty. So we were on our way to Park City and we were going through a little town called Oak Creek. They're having a bit of a Labor Day celebration, so we're gonna go check it out. Never heard of this town before. Looks like fun though. They got a bunch of old cars, look like some live music. Should be fun. Go check it out. Wherever I go, I will always know everything I need is right here with me. It's time to let it all go, no matter who knows anything about me. No, I'm ready to see what life's got for me. I got one thing left to say, dude. Nice. I should have just pulled up right next to these guys. Yeah, she would have fit in well here. For our international viewers, here in the United States, we observe the first Monday in September as Labor Day, an annual celebration of the social and economic achievements of American workers. The holiday is rooted in the late 19th century when labor activists pushed for a federal holiday to recognize the many contributions workers have made to America's strength, prosperity, and well-being. That one didn't even get a wash first. Gotta put it right next to that guy. Mr. Camper. In case you guys uh, didn't know what was going on here, welcome to the ninth annual Oak Creek Labor Day Car and Motor Show. After a quick driving break to check out the fair, we were back on the road. Next stop, a familiar one, Steamboat, Colorado, to hunt down several natural springs along the Yampa River. There are nine known springs, all within a small area. We just arrived in Steamboat, Colorado, and we're making a stop at the Dr. Rich Weiss Park. We did pass through Steamboat a little over a year ago on our way to Texas. We were just here for one quick day. We didn't get to see much. So we're gonna be here for maybe an hour or so. We read online that there was a tiny little hot spring that's free in the middle of this park. So we're gonna walk around this park and see if we can locate that and see if it's actually hot. Okay, so we found the little hot spring. It's like a nice little area, but it's a little crowded, so we're not gonna get in it today. Still a cool little park. Oh, it's right by the camper. We're just on a natural spring hunt today. It's cold? I don't think it's a hot spring, I think it's just a spring. It's a 78 degree spring. 78 degree spring. Miracle water though. Our next stop is the Lithia Springs and it's a 78 degree spring. There's nobody in it right now. It's just a tiny little pool. It's got milky water that's used to treat a variety of conditions. 
including bipolar disorder. Wow. This is, it's kind of sulfury smell. <laughs> Stings like eggs. Lithia Hot Springs is one of the world's most unique springs due to its high levels of lithium. Your feet are gonna smell like rotten eggs. How does that make you feel? It's probably better than it used to smell. <laughs> They just disappear in that milky stuff. It looks like a swimming pool that has, but has that shock stuff in it, like the overchlorinated. You know what I was thinking of? The swimming pool from Scarface. Our next natural spring is called the Black Sulphur Spring, and we think it's down here by the river, so we're gonna see if we can find that. It's not really clear on Google Maps. So depending on the water levels, Black Sulphur Spring fluctuates in color, size, and temperature. The spring often has an inky color due to hydrogen sulfide that continuously reduces into sulfur. Legend has it that three French trappers first noted this unusual spring in the Yampa Valley. The spouting spring, accompanied by a chugging sound, reminded them of a steamboat. Henceforth, since the early 1870s, the trappers, guides, and miners came to recognize and know this future town site as Steamboat Springs. Ooh, that more of a clear bottom. Looks like a swimming pool. Still smells like sulfur though. Steamboat Spring was believed to be the only natural geyser in Colorado once it erupted 14 feet into the air. In 1908, construction of the railroad reduced the flow of the spring considerably and it ceased to be a geyser. All of these springs are right on the Yumpa River. It's weird yes. that they're so close and they're like different temperatures. Right there on the edge of the river, you can see it upwelling the natural spring. All the white residue from the minerals just bubbles up. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. If you could, please click the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe and click the little bell. It'll give you a reminder next time we put out an episode. Later. I heard you say you found the story. Nick and I just realized we were in this exact location exactly a year ago heading the opposite direction. We were in a race to get to Texas for a wedding. Now we're in a race to get back home so you can chop some wood. <laughs> but we're at the same campground, at the same location. It's a great spot when you're passing on Highway 40. Check that out if you guys are passing through Dinosaur on your way to co through Colorado. Today we're going to go head into Dinosaur National Monument again. Last year we were just looking for a camping spot so we drove down into Echo Campground. This year we're going to check out the other side which supposedly has a lot of dinosaur fossils. Where's the quarry? Right you're going to take this left turn and uh -huh. then the immediate right and okay. then take you straight to the quarry. Okay. 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 Cool.
we just arrived at Dinosaur National Monument Quarry and Visitor Center and we are starting with the quarry first. We got to drive up here and park in the parking lot. If you don't want to do that, they have a five minute tram that takes you up here that's free. We're gonna check out the inside. They built a building around 1,500 dinosaur bones. And I do apologize if you can't hear us very well. They're requiring masks regardless of vaccination status inside these buildings. Dinosaur National Monument includes one of the Earth's richest known dinosaur fossil beds. I guess this is where they found a lot of the dinosaur bones. The dinosaur bones, now exposed on the quarry cliff, were buried in an ancient river flowing east about 149 million years ago. The fast-flowing river carried the bones downstream along the river bottom. As floodwaters receded, the river slowed. The bones dropped to the river bottom and began to pile up. They were covered by sand and mud. The result was the dinosaur log jam that you see before you today. Over time, the sediments turned to rock, protecting the bones in a stone time capsule. Earl Douglas, a paleontologist from the Carnegie Museum of Pittsburgh, opened this capsule when he discovered eight tail vertebrae of an Empatosaurus in 1909. This led to the eventual discovery of remains of 10 different species of dinosaur at the quarry. The gigantic plant-eating sauropods were the most common dinosaur in the area. As in today's ecosystems, meat-eating theropods were less numerous and account for less than 5% of all quarry fossils. Earl Douglas declared this site the best-looking dinosaur prospect I have ever found. This quarry yielded the remains of over 500 dinosaurs and other animals that lived during the Morrison time period. More than 10 species of dinosaur have been discovered within the monument. They range in size from about 7 inches to nearly 100 feet, with some sauropods exceeding 50,000 pounds. One of the outstanding features of this quarry is the large number of skulls that have been found. The skull of an animal often disarticulates from the skeleton after death. The skulls are rarely found articulated with the vertebrae. Of the 14 complete skulls that were discovered on this site, two Camarasaurus skulls have been left on the quarry face. The original skull of the Allosaur is on display in the exhibits. This fossilized skeleton, found in 1919 of a young Camarasaurus, is the most complete long-necked dinosaur ever found. Long-necked dinosaurs are also known as sauropods. 15% of the bones on the quarry face are those of Stegosaurus. The Allosaurus was the dominant predator of the Jurassic period. This is one of the most complete meat-eating dinosaur skeletons ever found in the late Jurassic rocks. And this quarry also gives you some pretty rare bragging rights. By allowing its guests to touch a 149 million year old dinosaur fossil. So we took a short minute drive back down that hill and we're gonna go check out the visitor center. This here is a Diplodocus femur. It's pretty big. The visitor center is packed full of educational information about the national park itself and its rich history. Here, visitors can learn other historical facts about the area, including an ancient tribe that once inhabited the land known as the Fremont people, the geology of the park, and the first homesteaders to move to this location. Most of these artifacts can be seen in person on the Colorado side of the park, and we learned all about them during our previous visit last year. 
feel free to go back and view that episode to learn more. There's where we camped in Echo Park up just over a year ago. We were here and we uh, lost our fuel line, if you recall, um, in that area. And we had to drive out this road. This was all a dirt road right here, all the way out to the main road and then back out to here. So that was the Colorado side of Dinosaur National Monument. And then this is the Utah side. There's quite a bit to do here. Unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna get all of it, so we're gonna have to try one more time next time we come back through here. But we're all the way down here right now. I don't see any roads that go up to here. So you must have to go way out and around to get to Rainbow Park. $450. <laughs> Your foot's like the length of one of the toes. Yeah. As much as we really enjoy discovering and exploring new places, it was kind of refreshing to see some familiar ones this week. It really brought to light that we are torn between nostalgia for the familiar and an urge for the foreign and strange. We live in a wonderful world that is full of beauty, charm, and adventure. There is no end to the adventures we can have if only we seek them with our eyes open. True explorers can revisit the same places time and again and always find something new and wonderful. We want to thank you for traveling with us over this past year and getting lost with us in all these beautiful places. We truly appreciate all your views and comments. If you enjoyed today's episode, we would love it if you'd once again show your support for our channel by clicking the thumbs up, subscribing if you haven't already, also ringing that reminder bell so you don't miss next week's Park City episode. And we look forward to traveling with you next Tuesday. This here is a Diplodocus femur. <laughs> Can I say that right? <laughs> this here is a Diplo... How do you say it again? <laughs> Aren't we all a little crazy? <laughs>